This world acknowledges the great and tremendous work that was done by this great man behind the establishment of this great institution. If at all I were to sing his praises, his achievements, I think I would even get some pain in my voice. Yes, I would even lose my voice because he has done very many, many things. I cannot talk about this man without taking you back to his roots and without letting you know who is behind all this great work. This is Professor Frederick Bantuvano Ian Kayanja, the first Vice Chancellor of this great institution that was founded in 1989. Professor Frederick Bantuman Ian Kayanja for the love of education came to Mbarara in 1989 to start up a public university. I couldn't take you through all his achievements without taking you back to the roots and that is the great institution where I am standing right now. He served as the vice chancellor for more and more over and over 20 years and that was from 1989 to 2014 when he stepped down. Welcome to Faces of Uganda. This is Bridget in Cementa. Crossing the words of the great man, the father, the teacher, the academician, the veterinarian took us back to his roots. Barara University of Science and Technology. We still need more of his story and this is taking us miles to move all the way from Barara to Kampala, Uma Grant in Lugogo to get his story. The man who is already 84 years but still strong and doing tremendously. The quality of a person's life is in direct proportion to their commitment to excellence regardless of their field of endeavor. Excellence can clearly define his hard work. Professor Frederick Ian Bantuwano Kayanja, born on the 4th of August 1938, is a Ugandan doubly qualified in veterinary and human medicine. Professor F.B.I. Kayanja has been the Chancellor of Gulu University, a public institution of higher education, since October 2014. He is a former Vice Chancellor of Barara University of Science and Technology, where he assumed that position in 19 89 and later stepped down in 2014. Before that, he served as the Deputy Vice Chancellor of Makerere University in 1986 to 1988, the oldest and largest public university in Uganda. The man whose story we are featuring today on Faces of Uganda is a parent, a grandparent, passionate about conserving the environment, security as an army man, and development. He is a teacher, physician, prominent researcher, an academic administrator, veterinary doctor who also is qualified in human medicine. Above all, the son born to Mr. Samson Bantuano and Mrs. Erina Kayanja upholds discipline as a core value to success. Professor Frederick Kayanja, born on the 4th of August 1938, received primary and secondary school education at King's College Budo, one of Uganda's most prestigious schools, and at an early age, did extremely well. He did the preliminary science course taking biology, physics, chemistry and mathematics at Makerere University College before it eventually became Makerere University. 
He left Uganda after winning a scholarship and was admitted at the Royal Veterinary College of the University of London. On completing the course, the preclinical course, he proved to be the best student of his class. In his time of office, as the Vice Chancellor of Mbarara University of Science and Technology, Professor FBI Kayanja was honored at the third Uganda British Alumni Association Awards at the residence of the British High Commissioner, where he received a Lifetime Achievement Award. He received this award after Justice George Kanyehamba, who was the previous winner of the award. On 20th February 2004, Professor FBI Kayanja received the highest academic award by the government of France. This was created by Napoleon Bonaparte in 1808 to recognize academic excellency in France. The great man we are featuring today holds very many awards and honors. Professor Frederick Ian Bantubano Kayanja attended undergraduate courses in the Universities of London and Oxford, was a postdoctoral researcher at the Nuffield Orthopedic Unit, University of Oxford, and obtained the PhD through a sandwich program from the University of East Africa in Cambridge, UK. His wisdom an excellent academic performance is overwhelming. On completing the preclinical course, he proved to be the best student of his class, then left the Royal Veterinary College to enter University College Medical School to read human anatomy. He passed his exams with the highest honors and then returned to the Royal Veterinary College to complete the veterinary clinic course. Faces of Uganda, what do the people say about this great man, Professor Frederick Ian Bantubano Kayanja? We know a vice chancellor who was a highly accomplished academician. This is a vice chancellor who had very, very good training. You can imagine the person who started in veterinary medicine and completed it very well, but ended up in human medicine. He was one of the leading, up to now, is still one of the leading professors in terms of research, because he had quite a number of grants that were tagged onto his name. He would call a spade a spade, but of course, after consulting whoever he's talking to and agreeing, if any position was not uh, right, he would say it point blank. One thing about him was that he was time conscious. Whenever he would tell you that I want to meet you at 10, 10 would be 10. Also, I, I still remember Kayanja uh, as a good leader. One day when I was a student, he called me to his office and he talked to me as you could see that leadership thing in him would tell you, you are a student, please do this, let's do this, let's do this, let's sort out this thing, we can sort it out like this. I think during that time when he was around, when we were staff, he's an, a good administrator from the people I interacted with, because personally I did not meet him, but those people who used to talk to him, they said he was a good administrator, he used to solve issues before they went out of hand. He had a lot of respect and passion for the staff. During his time, we used to have a lot of staff involvement where staff members would study and the fees would be waived plus some other money added as a research grant. He had zero tolerance for, for student unrests and strikes. And he, I think during his time, I don't remember us having a strike. The great profile you have just watched belongs to Professor Frederick Kayanja and I am standing opposite to his office right here at Uma Grants in Kampala. Let's just move straight to his office and get his story.
today the world will celebrate the remarkable work and effort that our great people have done in regards to developing our nation. And on faces of Uganda today, we are bringing to you someone who is very prominent, someone who is worth to be celebrated because of the hard work that they have done and the blocks that they have added on to our country, our nation, Uganda. And this is none other than a veterinary, a veterinary doctor. He is a human doctor. He is a very great man who was a vice, uh, a vice chancellor from Barra University from 1989 to 2014, and then apparently he is the current chancellor of Guli University. It is our pleasure to have you on the show, Faces of Uganda. You are welcome. Thank you. And we are so grateful to have you. This is Faces of Uganda on AET TV, empowering you. Just maybe to start with your background, we want to know about your background. Where are you born? Yes, I, I was born in Ruharo in Mbarara. Oh. And, uh, and but uh, I, I, I went to school in King's College, Budo. And from there, I was um, fortunately recognized by the British who were looking for youngsters to recruit and to train. And uh, I was a very good footballer. I was a good footballer, so they took me okay. and they they, they, they provided all my education in the UK and in the US. Okay, maybe before we go to that, how you went to the US, we also want to know this family, where it is found in Rohara. How many children were you at that time? Who were your parents? So that we get to know the whole of that story. Yeah, my father was um, a veterinarian mm -hmm. and he worked in our college for a very long time okay. and uh, played very good football okay. and a good sprinter and, 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 and that is probably the reason why I but, but my parents were very good to me okay. yes so why do you, at what stage do you realize your talents in football? And uh, this was football? at King's College Budo, oh, at okay. King's College Budo, and Mr. Barlow, who was the sports tutor, is the one who recognized okay. that talent, and, and, and when the British came looking for youngsters okay. to sponsor, he said that one, and so I was, you know, I went to Makerere just for two years in the science, and then they took me to the UK, okay. so, and they paid my fees, everything. Right. Yeah, but I had to undertake military training. Okay. Yeah. So, how has been the whole of your life in the line of academia? In the line of academia, after, well, I, I undertook veterinary training first because the, the, those who were paying wanted me to do so, but also because my father was a vet, one of the earliest vets in Uganda. He was delighted about that. Okay. And, if uh, I may ask something small. Yeah, uh, and, and then after the preclinicals in the vet course, I had done very well. Okay. So I left the vet course and went to medical school. And there I did human anatomy and, 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 and got a very good degree, a first class degree. But I still returned to the vet school and finished vet. And then went straight to medical school and 
completed the human medicine program as well. Yes, and the, the army also took me to the U.S. So I went to Massachusetts General Hospital where I did my residency in orthopedics. So when I came back to East Africa, I was dual. Yes, I was an army officer, but I had very good training. And the Kenyans recognized that. And I did some teaching in uh, University of Nairobi, but eventually I was asked to come to Uganda during the difficult time of Idi Amin. And uh, but, but there are many secrets about that which I cannot divulge. Okay, let us verify. Yeah, and um, but then I, I I had to my family to be evacuated at very short notice because Idi Amin had discovered that I was also not only a university teacher but also a British Army officer. So rather than be killed, I was taken out and came back only after Idi Amin had been overthrown. Oh. Yeah. So, how do you come to how do you come to join Barry University of Science and Technology? Yeah, I taught in Makerere University when I came back, and from Makerere, eventually in Makerere University, I became the deputy vice chancellor in 1986, and. Uh, then I was called and asked whether I was interested in uh, starting another university and uh, I must say I was greatly encouraged by colleague Professor George Kiria who was the Vice Chancellor who said take the opportunity and I took the opportunity and I was asked by the then Minister of Education to think about starting Mbarara University and uh, the President encouraged me and he said well and even that's where you were born that's your place of birth so is your home. Okay. So that is how I came to be in Mbarara University and uh, I, I got with the support of the president and president the president of Cuba Castro, Fidel Castro, I got help from the government of Cuba for staff and initial equipment to start the medical school. Yes, and uh, that is how we started. And then from, I was Vice Chancellor from end of 1988 of Barara University up to 2014. That's a long time. It's a very, <laughs> it's a very long time, yes. but then your tremendous work is still recognized. Yeah. Uh, in that time that that time range that you were at Mbara University, did you meet some challenges as a vice chancellor or Oh yes, there, there's no shortage of challenges. Okay. The only tragedy is that some people cannot overcome those challenges. But you must expect challenges. That is what life is all about. Okay. Now I must put on record the people who really supported me and uh, for instance coming to Mbarara the, I received a lot of support from HE the president, 
from the Minister of Education, from the Minister of Health, and the Minister of Health at that time was none other than my brother, my late brother, Dr. Makumbi, and also received a lot of help from Dr. Ronald Butter, who was the resident district commissioner of Mbarara. He said, I'm helping a fellow soldier, he used to say. So I had no shortage of challenges, but I could rely on these people for help. And uh, yes, we managed. That's so great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe just to take you back in, the, in your profile, there is something that I had wanted to ask you about. Uh, what were the achievements that you achieved within that time? You were a footballer, very good footballer, who was even taken to Britain. And I want to know, did you get any achievements, medals, features? Do you remember all uh, uh, You know, I was um, approached by clubs okay. to, to be a, a professional footballer okay. in the UK. I mean, I, I played football for the universities, played for, for Cambridge, I played for Oxford, you, you know. But I, I couldn't leave the program I was supposed to go through to become a professional football player. A friend of mine who was uh, at medical school opted to become a, a professional footballer. And he said, you know, but I said, I enjoy the game. But, um, and it has helped me in many ways to get to where I am. But that's it. I leave that, the professional side, to others. Okay. Yes, I, I must say, when I was in, in medical school, I met the person who taught me comparative anatomy was Professor J.Z. Young. Now, Professor J.Z. Young, as you read from many of his books, was excellent at nature and the problems that are now afflicting us, destroying the environment and so on. And he recognized my interest in the environment and supported me all along. When I came back, I became Chair of uh, Uganda Wildlife Authority and so on. These were the other things which I was doing at the time. And uh, we set up the, the institute in Bwindi Impenetrable Forest for the university. It was my interest in the environment. So it's not only the fact that I was interested in science and medicine without relating it to the environment. No, I was and I was in the Uganda Wildlife Authority, yes. I was in Uganda National Parks, yes. And I remain committed to the environment. Okay. Yes, it's, it's only in honor of the late Professor J.Z. Young, who nurtured me and reinforced my interest in the environment. Okay. Yes. So I've written a lot about the environment. Okay. Yes. Maybe to also ask you something in regards to your education. Which universities did you attend? And also, I want you to also tell us about the award that you received in France. Yeah, now, 
I attended the University of London. Okay. I attended the University of Oxford, the National College in Oxford. Yes, in Cambridge I was in Wolfson College. I attended the University of London, yes, as, as I say, because I went to, I did my human anatomy degree in University College Medical School, University of London. I did a veterinary program earlier on in the Royal Veterinary College, University of London. So I was in the University of London, I was in the University of Cambridge, I was in the University of Oxford and Harvard. Okay. This is where I did quite a lot of my orthopedics. Okay. I did my residency at, as, as, as I said, at Massachusetts General Hospital in the US, Boston, US. So, yes, I, uh, but, but that, I was also and remained committed to the environment. That's why I was so much interested in the Windy Institute of Tropical, yes? Okay. Yes, we started it, it was, I mean, it, did a lot of very good work. Okay, so th this is an interest which is a life interest to me. Whoever destroys the forest is a criminal. Yeah, and that is why we've got this terrible weather problem. Climate change. Yes, this climate change. Okay. Yes, we are responsible for the for that because we've damaged the environment. We are paying the price. True. So you can tell us more about the award that you received in France. Yes, I, I, I received when I, 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 I received the the Called, awarded the Commander de Order de Palmes yeah, Academic of the Republic of France. Yes? Yes? yes that is a very, very prestigious award. Yes? They recognized me as a surgeon, yes, and I have got the, I showed you the, the document to show that I am. But you are a surgeon. Yes. Yeah, we, see, we saw it. Yes, you, you saw it, 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 it's here, right? It, it's, uh, There it is, from the Republic of France. I can congratulate you even when it's very many years back. Yes, <laughs> very many years back, but it's still valid. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Okay. Yes. Alright. So, I can practice surgery in France. Okay. Yes. Then maybe just coming back to our own must, I uh, just keep to ask you about Murray University because uh, I know that you have been the former vice chancellor. That's why I just chanted to eat. Yes. You back to yes, I, I. You know, I was DVC Makerere, mm -hmm. 1986, mm -hmm. and then uh, started the process of starting the new university in Mbarara mm -hmm. in 1988. End of 98, I became the vice-chancellor 
of the new university, Barara University, and uh, didn't leave until 2014. Am I not the longest serving Vice <laughs> Chancellor in your country? I think you were the great poet. Yeah, it's, you it's, are. it's, it's 24 years. <laughs> yes? Okay. Yeah. Maybe Miss Mbara University is always known as a medical school, but there. No, 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 it's not a medical school. Mm. It started with human medicine, it started with the medical school, but has expanded to other subjects. Okay. Yes, and, and, and you, must, you, you, you must not confine it to one area, because I think it has expanded in areas which are essential. You know, for instance, you know, education. The science faculty. Yes, mm. the science faculty and its education components. Yes? I mean, those are very important. And also, many people say, you aren't you wrong to start development studies? But do you think I was? No, I don't think I, I, I still remain committed to that because science does not exist in a vacuum. Sure. Yes? It works with other disciplines. And development studies are the fact that there is that word development is important. Yes? If only to fire scientists into pro development project, that is how I do it. Yes, although many people, including at work, to begin with, the president said, "You know, no, you must, you are diverting and so on." I said, "Mr. President, the scientist has to develop." And development is a component which is essential for all aspects of life. You see, the problem with you, Kayanja, is always, you've always got a defense. Right? But why not? Why not defend yourself if you think you are right? Okay, so, yes. And let us be broad-minded. A, a, a good doctor must know some components of development studies. Yes? Especially where they concern the development of the nation and its economy. Does the doctor live in a vacuum? <laughs> yes? No. Does the scientist live in a vacuum? No, you don't. So development, if properly managed, is useful. Yes. Okay. Um, oh, right, madam. All right. Yes? We are just winding up. I just tell us about one thing that makes Mbara University so unique from the rest of other universities, especially in the medical world. Whereby, I rec if I am um, to recall, one of the of the things that happened in the past at a time when you were sick and you preferred to be operated from Mbara Referral Hospital, yeah, other than other hospital, other no, I, I, unfortunately was diagnosed with a, a tumor in my right parotid gland. And I told my Cuban colleagues, remove it. And they said, oh, but sir, you know, you must go, you know, and everybody was saying, no, you, you, you should go, and so I said, remove it. Yes, they removed it very quickly. 
and cleaned it. And those students who were in the institution realized that those capabilities are here. Okay. Yes. And I, I, I did not doubt the capabilities of my colleagues. Yes. I knew they could do it. Yes, and they did. I'm still alive. I'm now approaching 84 years of age. Okay. Yes, so. That just takes me back to something <laughs> that you had talked about success in your story. According to some years later that I, I read some time back, uh, where you were talking about success as just a contribution of the way how people, uh, their contribution of a person to the community, that is how you are looking at success, that's how you are defining it. Yes. And I say that was success to your students, to your people within Barara Referral Hospital and the University at large. I can say... No! Mm. I, I think it was, uh, you, you know, because several colleagues, in, mm. in, in, even in Mulago Hospital, mm. came to me later and said, hey, I, your people are capable of doing this. Okay. Yeah. So it was success for all of us. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. You showed the capabilities and encouraged people in this country to use those capabilities. Okay. Yes. Why not? Yes, mm -hmm. I am alive because they did it. I did it very well. And as sure. I said, I am now 84 years old. Okay. All right. But I am still. You are still strong? Yes. I can see. Strong. Yes. <laughs> Mainly because uh, of my soldier background. Ah, okay. Yes. Maybe just one last word as we, as we conclude. I want you to talk about the future of education, research, and and health. Now, education is an eye-opener to the individual. But education is essential because it affects everybody else. Okay. In that, the people in the village who don't understand the importance of clean water are a problem. Yes, so education is crucial in that aspect. Yes, have you got me? Yes. Yes? Yes? Yes, I've got you. Yes. But I think you should also hint about the education system of Uganda, whereby we are teach we say we 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 say that we have more job seekers compared to the job creators. I also want you to talk about that. Ah now you have to appreciate the problems your country has gone through. Okay. When this COVID hit you, it decimated quite a lot of jobs. Yes? Now, do you think that was only in Uganda? No, it was everywhere. It was but the other places are better equipped to handle the situation post COVID. That is where we must go. Yes? How do we get to a situation whereby we can handle a situation whereby our jobs are decimated, yes? When that situation comes to an end, how do we effect a recovery? Amen. Yes? Now, there are many programs going on at the moment, yes? To try and alleviate that. But I put it to you that the basic problem 
is when you go to the village, you still find people who cannot even read. Yes? Yeah, very many. Yeah. Now, don't, don't you think you, 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 you've been diverted by COVID and all its problems from looking at that basic fact? This is my fear. We, we, we have forgotten that we still have people who cannot even read. They are in the village. And we are very busy designing programs, yes? For those who have gone to school, yes? And not making sure that those who have remained in the village can also get basic education, basic education. Madam, I'm crying out for those people in the villages to at least be able to read. Research and innovation are very, very important. Yes? Especially today. But unfortunately, many of our youngsters are conducting research on well-beaten tracts. Yes? They have failed to understand that your country and mine has got aspects of research which are unique. Those who really will succeed will only be those who recognize those aspects. Yes? Areas which are relevant to your future health. Yes? And areas which will preserve your environment and areas which will give you better health than what you have at the moment. Areas which will bring education even to the villager. Yes? But we have forgotten all that because of the crisis we are facing. And, but sanity will, will, will come back. It will come back. It always does. On the issue of research and innovation, yes. yes, you've laid a ground for students and they are coming up with these innovations yes. in their research. Yes. But what are your thoughts about but, but you see, the, 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 the students, many of them come out with, with very good ideas. Yes? And the problem is funds for research. This is an area which is not very attractive to those people who fund. They think it's money being thrown down a deep hole and there is no end ending to that deep hole. That's what they tell you and me. But if you don't take that risk, you will not succeed. We have to take, to learn to take that risk. To give funds where there is evidence that what that youngster wants to do research on is justified. Okay. Yes? Yes. Okay, what is defined in the education white paper? Well, I, I unfortunately am not empowered to to say anything, you know, unless the, the peers gives me those powers. You know your country and mine and the... You, you know, yes, I was part of the group, but the answers must come through the group. Okay. 
Yes. It has to be a response from the whole team. Uh, uh, not from the whole team. The document is coming. Patience. The youth need to appreciate one that being young is a great favor from your Creator. This is a phase of development which you go through and it will not return. Use it wisely. How do you use it wisely? Acquire knowledge as a youth. Yes? In other words, attend school. Yes? Do what is essential as school work. Absentism. Yes? And unfortunately, these days there is also politics affecting the system. If you realize that as a youth you are going through a phase which if you grow up and you empower yourself you will be a success later on in life. How do you empower yourself? Go to school. Study. Study hard. And be innovative. Yes. Okay. okay? Mm. But if you think about striking because there is no food, you are not striking because the, 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 you, you know you didn't get money for this and that, that can always be resolved without strike. I'm against indiscipline. Must community, you've come a long way and the institution has a great future, but the future must recognize the past. Because it's from the past that you build a future. If you forget what you have gone through, then you will fall flat on your faces. Recognize those who have contributed to the institution. Recognize the brickwork they have laid. Build on that brickwork. Don't destroy it thinking you can build your own. That only takes the institution back to square one. And good luck. May the good Lord be with you. That is my humble prayer. Succeed. Succeed we must. All right. Thank you so much. Thank okay. you so much. We've been right here in his office, yeah. uh, Mr. Kanyanja Frederick, and uh, apparently he's the Chancellor of Goli University. And you have heard from him his words of wisdom and encouragement to the youth and to the mass fraternity. I will say we shall remain faces of Uganda, AET TV, empowering you.